Hello everyone and welcome to Signals, Systems and Signal Processing with Wolfram U. This lesson will go over some basic concepts that will be used in this course. We will introduce signals and systems in two different categories of continuous time and analog and discrete time and digital. Other concepts that we will discuss in this lesson are sampling and signal processing. A signal is a function that contains information about a physical phenomenon. It could be a function of one or more independent variables. For example, a speech signal or an audio signal is acoustic pressure as a function of time, or a picture is a brightness function of two special variables. Analog signals are represented by continuous functions, and the dependent variable can take any real number. The value of the function can be any real number. Some examples of analog signals that we can capture, playback, and analyze are the human voice, sounds produced by musical instruments, or electrical waves in an electrocardiogram. Given a continuous time signal x of t, a discrete time signal y of n can be obtained by evaluating x of t at uniformly spaced intervals t. Here the variable n is an integer and t is a real value known as the sampling step or period. This process of converting a continuous time signal into a discrete time signal is called sampling. For example, if the continuous time signal x of t shown here is sampled with sampling a step of 0.1, we get the discrete time signal x of nt shown here in red. This way, we have basically obtained a discrete time signal y of n by sampling the signal x of t with the sampling step 0.1. Later in this course, we will discuss sampling in more detail. A discrete time signal in its simplest form is just a list of values, and each sample of the signal can be any real number. A digital signal is defined as a discrete time signal where the data range is also discretized. Basically, the dependent variable, the amplitude, takes only a finite number of values. For example, the daily value of a publicly traded company, as shown here, is an example of a discrete time signal. Or pixels in an image captured by a digital camera is an example of a digital signal. Another example would be samples in a digital audio recording. A system is any circuit or algorithm mechanism, basically any process that transforms some input signal into an output signal. In this course, we'll focus on an important category of systems called linear time invariant systems or LTI systems in continuous time or in discrete time LSI or linear shift invariant systems. As an example of continuous time LTI systems, consider the RC circuit shown here. It is a series interconnection of a resistor and a capacitor. The input signal is denoted by X of T, and the output signal is the voltage across the capacitor, denoted by Y of T. The input-output relation for the RC circuit can be modeled with the differential equation shown here. If we use a square wave signal as input to the system, here you can see how the response of the RC circuit the voltage across the capacitor changes over time for different values of the frequency of the input signal. As you can see, high frequency signals are attenuated more than low frequency signals. This is why the RC circuit is called a low pass filter. Turning to another familiar example, consider a bank account or an investment account. The relationship between the monthly output, the balance, Y of N, and the input deposits is defined by the first order linear difference equation with constant coefficients shown here. R is the percent annual average return. This is similar in many ways to the differential equation representing the RC circuit that we just described. 
let's say you deposit $333 on a monthly basis into some investment account with an average annual return of 5.5%. Also assume that you open the account with a $1,000 initial deposit. In this case, the difference equation can be expressed as indicated here. If you plot the accumulation over a 20-year period and compare it with a non-compounding or zero-interest investment strategy, you can see how the output or the balance changes over time for each scenario. One of the main goals of this course is to understand how signals passing through such systems are modified by them. As mentioned before, the significant portion of this course will be devoted to the analysis of LTI or linear time invariant systems in continuous time and discrete time systems. Learning about signal processing techniques can be helpful when we need to design systems that will process signals in a certain way to meet some certain design requirements. For example, here we have a discrete time filter that can be used to approximate the operation of taking a derivative of a signal. Now, if you process the image of apples shown on the left using this differentiating filter, we will get the image on the right with enhanced vertical edges. Fourier analysis plays a critical role in developing a comprehensive understanding of signal processing with LTI systems. For example, from Fourier analysis, we learned that the frequency spectrum of a simple RC circuit with RC equal to 1 takes the form of a complex function shown here with frequency omega as the independent variable. And if you plot the magnitude of this function, which is known as the gain, we can see why as we increase the frequency, the amplitude of the response of the filter to a sinusoidal input signal diminishes. Fourier analysis also gives us information about the frequency content of a signal. For example, it can be used to find the pitch and timbre of a musical instrument. As an example, consider this dual tone multi-frequency audio signal that is used for phone dialing purposes. Applying discrete Fourier transform to the audio signal gives us the frequency content of the signal, as you can see here. In this lesson, we had a short introduction to signals and systems. We presented some examples of signals and systems. We looked at examples of signals and systems analysis, including Fourier analysis. We created a filter as an example of discrete time signal processing and applied it to an image.